we have the microphones working. Good afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome to this session. I'm joined by an incredible stellar list of wonderful collectors. Uh, and we're going to spend the next hour talking about collections in a wide variety of different ways. I'm taking off my watch so that I can keep an eye on the time, but I hope somebody also will remind me when it's coming to the end so that we can uh, draw it to a conclusion in an elegant way. When I became director of the Serpentine in 1991, the missing piece of the puzzle in the London art world were collectors. We had stellar artists, recognized worldwide. We had the public sector museums and galleries which were blossoming and commercial galleries were springing up all over London. Now the puzzle is complete and we not only have stellar artists but also stellar collectors. The market for contemporary art is extraordinary. In 2013, the highest selling painting at auction was Francis Bacon's Three Studies of Lucian Freud, reaching 84.7 million. Uh, the highest contemporary art sale was Jeff Koons' Balloon Dog Orange, which was 34.4 million. These are very significant uh, figures. A special feature of Pinter this year is a celebration of women. And this, I think, probably describes why we have been invited to this panel. I would like to begin by introducing uh, everyone to you, even though you may know all of them. Tiki Antensio de Midgen was born in Venezuela. From 1998 to 2004, she was on the Board of Advisors for the Arts Institutes International, whose program served 15,000 students of creative art from 90 countries. Currently, she is a trustee of the Guggenheim Museum and president of the Museum's International Directors Council. She is chairman of the Tate's Latin American Acquisition Committee, member of its International Executive Committee, and an ex officio trustee of Tate America's Foundation. She is also on the board of advisors of the Art at Auction magazine, and was on the Board of Advisors for the UBS Art Collection from 2008-2009. I've asked everybody to prepare a two-minute introduction to their collections and what they hold dear. And so we will start with Tiki and then uh, extend it to everybody else. Thank Tiki. you very much, Julia. I'm very, very pleased to be here. Thank you for coming. Um, especially pleased with my fellow uh, panelists. Um, all of which are very accomplished and very um, important collectors and uh, manifestors of art. I, um, I can say that I began my passion for collecting whilst I was very young. Uh, I had ter terrific role models in my family, specifically my uh, uncle Otto Atencio, who many of the people that I see here present my, have either met or have heard of. My aunt, my aunt uh, also, Sagrario Perez Soto, um, de Atencio, she also was a role model in every sense. So I began very early on in my life, surrounded by beautiful art and by the passion of collecting. As a, as a child, I would go, young, young woman, I would say not as a child, but as a young woman, I would go with my family to visits, to museums, to galleries, um, and um, even artists studios, so I was really impregnated from a very young age. Um, my first painting was a, a, a painting that my father uh, gave me when I was 17 years old, and um, so I can say that I really, really had the privilege of being uh, early on um, in, 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 in the world of collecting, and later I started on my own collecting also. Uh, my goals are um, numerous and they've changed and varied during, during the, my years and experience as, um, as a collector. So nothing is set in stone for me. Um, although I've had, uh, and I do have a strategy, I tend to go with my heart also and sometimes uh, not follow that path, but I think that's important too and that gives also a very uh, intimate and um, personal um, focus on, on, on what I do, I think. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Valeria. 
Uh, Valeria Napoleoni is an art collector and patron to a select number of arts and fashion organizations. She is head of the development committee at Studio Voltaire, a trustee of the Fashion Arts Foundation, and one of the Global Council of New York's University's president, John Sexton. She received a BA from New York University's Journalism School and an MA in Art Gallery Administration at the Fashion Institute of Technology, New York City. Valeria's collection focuses on female contemporary artists working internationally. Forming close bonds with artists, Valeria has provided pivotal to support to the careers of many of today's most critically acclaimed practitioners. Hi, everyone. Hello? Yes, you can hear me. Um, I'm Valeria. I'm very pleased today to be here, especially considering the focus of this year's uh, Pintas edition, the focus on women. Um, as a collector, I devote, yeah. As a collector, ah yes. As a collector, I devote my energy and my passion to emerging artists, not necessarily really young in age, but just emerging in their career, so they can be also older artists un, uh, unrecognized. Um, and my activity as patron goes along. It's, it's as important as being a collector for me is to give back uh, to the reality around me. So, uh, and I devote my energy to organizations that follow my, my, my goals, uh, organizations that give voice to artists who are underrepresented, or um, younger artists who don't have the chance. Um, there are organ smaller organizations who, who give me the chance to, to make a big difference when I'm present, and a chance to be hands-on in what I do and not just uh, give a check at the end of the year. Uh, I want to be hands-on, I want to be involved. This organization are Studio Voltaire, as Julia mentioned. Um, South London Gallery, these are the longest uh, two organizations I've been devoted my energy to. But there are all sorts of uh, you know, London uh, institutions that are amazing, and we are very lucky in London to have such a rich reality. Uh, of uh, you know contemporary culture um, in terms uh, of um, of my activity as uh, as patron uh, i'm involved with artists i i enjoy being around them i support um, projects um, artist projects uh, artist publications um, and everything that is entailing you know supporting an artist uh, at their stage when nobody is looking um, what can I say else? Um, it's, again, it's very important for me to do both, to be a patron and to support a reality that needs a lot of funding nowadays, especially in a competitive environment as London is, and, uh, and, to, and to feed uh, my collection. The relationship with the artist is very close. I engage a lot in, uh, in hosting dinners in my place because I love to cook, I love to host, and it's a way of getting people together, having them, um, you know, uh, chatting and connecting and in fact in fact magical things happen when people are connected and uh, so artists galleries curators uh, designers um, architects uh, it's such a privilege to be surrounded by by um, talent and that's what i want to be in my life that is the, the dream of my life has always been and, and finally i've made it Muriel. Muriel's Stanford Collection was founded in 1999 with the support and in collaboration with the curator Andrew Renton. One of the collection's key initial aims was to build a London-based international collection that was reflective of the dynamic scene here, as well as of the larger international context of contemporary art. From the start, the collection sought to support emerging artists. This patronage of a new generation of artists was framed and contextualized with work by some of the more established and defining names of contemporary art since the 1960s. In 2005, the Cranford Collection began mounting a series of installations in, dom in a domestic context, which are viewed by appointment. This series continues to date and enables the collection to explore the possibilities of contemporary art outside the conventional exhibition setting. So I'm Muriel Salem. 
I'm old. Uh, it's, uh, the, the collection is Grandpa Collections. And uh, as Julia said now, it sta all started with, uh, with me being single-mindedly and buying works of art. I mean, unlike Tiki, I grew up in Beirut where the contemporary art scene was not at all prevalent. We only went to anthropologic uh, museums. We've learned traditional arts and that's all we would, which I was accustomed to. I, I was more interested in uh, causes, uh, whether it's ecology or... Uh, so my focus, was, my focus was always somewhere else, but not, not necessarily in art. And uh, it's actually living in London that brought it all to me. I was only, you know, I was at the age of 17 when I visited my, the large museums and I took my first trip to Europe and did the Grand Tour, which that's what you did when you were a Lebanese girl before you got married. They took you on a Grand Tour of Europe and made you visit Paris and Venice and Rome and uh, educated you. Uh, and uh, that's where I had my first taste. And London did the rest, so I arrived in London in 1975 to take a course at my local Camden Art Centre that at the time was running a foundation course. course on, but of course you started at uh, Italian Renaissance and finished with the contemporary. And uh, uh, I mean that's, that's history. Um, the interest in the art started because I met interesting people in my life who opened doors, opened my eyes, opened my mind. And one of them was Dr. Uh, Renton, who at the time was um, heading Goldsmith College for the curating course. He was my friend and he's the one that, that introduced me to the London scene. And together for years we looked and uh, discovered and met artists until you know, it was evident that we had to start collecting, and this is how the collection started. It started wanting to tell a story. It was started by wanting to live with the issues of our times. It started, uh, but of course, as um, it ended up somewhere else, it ended up by being a large collection. Uh, with uh, uh, the focus was London, but then it became very international. And it's really the artist who led us there. So the London artist, after the conversation, started telling us about the German artists that they were interested in, which took us there, and then it was the American abstraction, so we went there. And now we're trying to wave a, which I hope will be an interesting collection. Thank uh, you. I can, yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Is there anything else you want to add? No, no, I just wanted to say that the commitment is more important than the collecting, <laughs> than earning the, the, the things. The, the journey is more important than the... The dedication. The, the, yeah. the C word indeed, I think, for all of us, is something that is uh, really the key and the very heart of what we do. Nadia. Nadia Samdani is a co-founder and president of Samdani Art Foundation, a private, not-for-profit foundation based in Dhaka that aims to increase artistic engagement between Bangladesh and the rest of the world. The foundation has enabled South Asian artists to expand their creative horizons through production grants, residencies, education programs and exhibitions. She is also the founder and director of the Dakar Art Summit, which is the largest dedicated non-commercial platform for South Asian art. She has also commissioned the largest public art project in Dhaka to date by Rax Media Collective. Her foundation also hosts the Samdani Art Award biannually in collaboration with the Delfina Foundation here in London. She is an avid art collector her local and international art collection now includes over 2,000 artworks. She is also a member of the New Museum's International Leadership Council and the advisory board of Colombo Art Biennale. She serves on the Parasol Unit's international committee as well. Nadia, would you like to have two minutes to talk about your interests and your passions in terms of collecting? Thank you. Thank you, Julia. I'm really honored to be here today's panel, dedicated or non-dedicated collectors. Um, I guess I fall under both the categories. Um, I have an art foundation where we're focused on collecting South Asian art. Um, we work with a team of curators where we collect quite strategically our theme and our 
And then on the other hand, I have my personal collection, which is my, my journey as a collector, where, um, where, not, uh, where I don't have any particular bind to any kind of region or any particular genre. It's, uh, it's my journey where my husband and I have traveled all over the world to different fairs, biennials, exhibitions, and we've collected. Um, and then, then another thing that which is which I find very interesting is that you know I commission artworks for public viewing. So these are not necessarily that I collect because it's not always possible to collect these. But um, this is something that we really enjoy. That you know I get to uh, share it with everyone. For me. Uh, you know, collecting personally, of course, I enjoy, but it's also important for me, and what I really enjoy is sharing with the public. So I can give you an example. Earlier this year, we commissioned uh, Shilpa Gupta to do a project in Dhaka, and which is now being exhibited at the Berlin Biennale. And then um, I come from a collector family, where my family's been collecting Bangladeshi art for a very long time. And so the passion's been there always, and uh, and now you know I, my I we've I've started from collecting uh, modern masters from a lot of Bangladeshi art, and now um, you know I collect a lot of contemporary art. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. One of the things that fascinates me about collecting, I, I am not a collector, is I always think it's a gene that you either have or you don't have. So maybe the first question I could ask you all is, I've heard a little about, we've all heard a little about, about the, um, when you, how you're forming your collections, but do you, when, did the, when did the bug really bite? When did you first think, I have to own something rather than look at it? Tiki. I was in New York. I was with my uncle that I mentioned before, and there was an Armando Reverón being sold and uh, he nudged me and he said, uh, I think that, uh, that we should uh, go ahead with that. I said, well, why don't you? I tell, tell my uncle, no, no, I think you, sh you should begin. And um, all right, so I, I raised my paddle, my heart was beating faster than ever. And, uh, I, uh, and it was a record price. Wow. Yes. And in another occasion, I was with my husband, who's sitting here with me. And um, we were in another auction, and there was a uh, Andy Warhol painting, and he nudged another nudge in my life, and he said, "Go for that one." I said, "Well, why? Why don't you go for that?" So we got it. <laughs> so I, it, it was a bug that existed before, but I think New York was, although it existed in Venezuela before, when I was uh, younger, when I moved to New York in 1980, it just took off. And I think a lot had to do with uh, the scene at the moment. Um, so that passion, it's difficult to pinpoint when it began, but I can remember those distinct uh, opportunities when I was successful in bidding for art that I still have. Well, the global market is huge. I mean, in the last 20 years, it's changed in ways that we could not even have imagined. So what does that mean for you as collectors? How does that... How do you embrace, on the one hand, these extraordinarily high prices, and on the other hand, this incredible appetite for, for ownership uh, that exists today? Valeria. Yes. Uh, first of all, as I was saying before, I'm not a greedy collector, and uh, I don't have to own everything, and my collection is not about covering everything that's happening nowadays on women. It's a personal collection, it's a personal journey. There is a lot out there that I can admire from far away and uh, without owning it. So, but there are moments where you really have your heart beating and say, I need to have it, I, this is the moment. I do a lot of research with artists. I'm, I, I follow them, I do studio visit and I, and I engage with them on many levels. So when there is a reaction, a physical reaction that I have is my heart beating and I know now, after a few years collecting, what I'm looking in my physical reaction. If I have to rationalize a lot about buying an artwork 
or getting uh, close to an artist or just you know to a practice that doesn't doesn't sound right to me i know that it's actually it's uh, auto convincing myself